Why not? All right, we're going to start the next talk now. Soon, sometime. We're recording. All right, so I'm Zach. Uh, Zach's office. I work at Pro Circular. I'm a red teamer there. Um, most, uh, <laughs> most of you guys know me. If not, that's who I am. Um, and my talk tonight is going to be Blue Teaming the Shit Out of Your Network. Or the other title, Your Network's Bad and You Should Feel Bad. <laughs> um, so when I was putting this together, like, where do we even start, right? If I'm going to talk about kind of the basics of networking, networking is it's very straightforward when you look at it from top to bottom, right? But it's a really in-depth field. It's a mile, mile deep, pretty, pretty narrow in, in band, right? So the backbone of your company rides on it. Proper attention to detail is critical. Um, so if we're going to start anywhere, we can start with uh, some terminology. Some of this will be review for a lot of you. Um, but this is kind of just the basics of stuff that we'll touch on in the talk. Um, switch, land, land, firewalls, ingress, egress, sense of asterisk, DMZ, bastion, host, VLANs, and mutation, blah, blah, let's get into it. Um, oh, and so what I did was I took this as like, I'm just going to try and learn networking. I'm going to go on to Google, so I'm going to Google, for like, hey, what's a switch? And just go to Wikipedia, read, read the first bit, and try and figure it out. And I did that with, you know, almost all of them. So network switch. A network switch is a multi-port network bridge that uses hardware address protocol and forwards uh, and forward data at the data link layer, layer two of the OSI model. We're not going to dig in the OSI model tonight. Don't worry. Um, some switch some switches can also process. I need to pick a screen and stick with it. How about that? Can also process data at the network layer layer three by additionally incorporating routing multifunctionality. Such switches are commonly known as layer three switches or multi-level switches. Yeesh. So, I mean, we know what a switch is, right? Back in the day, we had hubs. We had really small networks, five, six computers. You plug something in, it'd be like, hey, this is Jeff's computer, where's Bob's computer? And it would send it to the hub, and the hub would send it to everybody, and Bob's computer would be like, yo, I'm here. Switches kind of take that away. They use the ARP protocol, uh, address resolution protocol, and the switch stores that itself. So when you jack into a switch, it, you jack in and go, hey, I'm Jeff's computer, and Bob's does the same thing. And then the switch knows where you guys live. So when Jeff's like, hey, where's Bob's computer? Instead of sending that to everybody, the switch is like, hey, he's right here. Let's just send the traffic right on. You don't have to fight all the broadcasting and stuff. LAN, WAN, pretty simple. LAN, local area network. That's your internal network, typically. Uh, WAN, the wide area network. Um, the easiest way to explain that, of course, is that's essentially your connections out to the internet. Firewall uh, computing. Uh, firewall is a network security system that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. Firewall is typically established as a barrier between the trusted internal network, your LAN, and the untrusted external network, such as the internet. Um, we'll touch on this in a little bit. This is a little bit old school thinking, but I mean, that is the definition of final, all right? You write some rules, it only lets that stuff go. Ingress, egress, ingress meaning inbound traffic to thing. Outbound traffic being egress from thing, sense of asterisk. So you'll see a lot of document. Well, you may not see a lot of documentation anymore. But again, back in the day with <coughs> firewall documentation, the nomenclature would be from the sense of the port. So if you have a firewall, you have an inbound connection from your WAN, and then your outbound connection to your LAN. So you have the two ports, right? But each of those ports is going to communicate both ways. So when you're talking about setting up firewall rules, you need to know. Here now. You need to know and keep in mind that this is going to egress and ingress, same as this port. So when you're setting rules, you need to be sure that you're taking from the sense of the port. So if you're setting up a rule saying, you know, something on the inside can only go outbound, you need to do that from the sense of the port of the egress and vice versa. It gets a little convoluted. It's easier to see on paper. But, you know, I don't even think we go into that tonight. So I just threw that in for the cool. Um, DMZ, uh, computer security. DMZ is the demilitarized zone. It's a physical or logical subnetwork that contains and exposes an organization's external facing devices to an untrusted network, usually a larger network, such as the internet. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. This one's really wordy. Um, the name derived from, we're just going to skip that at the bottom, uh, from the term demilitarized zone, an area between nation states in which military operations are not permitted, which I always find ironic because we set these up to be attackable. Like we, these are the areas that we know are going to have problems. And that's what the nation states are attacking. So why are we calling them demilitarizing? Anyway, trivia question for the night. Does anyone know what that is? Anybody? No? 
It is the DMZ, yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a bastion. It's a fort, right? And so we'll get into a bastion host. A bastion host is a host that is, uh, has a special purpose in computing on a network specifically designed and configured to withstand attacks. So if you look at like the old school, you know, we take a lot of the terminology from the military because it's DMZ, blah, 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 blah. But as you're trying to attack this, 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 this bastion, like there's these odd angles, and all of this infield is area that you can set up guns, right? People and stuff to shoot other people's and stuff, because that's what launchers do. But this gives you an attackable area, an attackable surface area to, to launch counterattacks from at odd angles. So you can get you know, to like every single nook and cranny around the entire thing. That's kind of what the bastion host in computing is set up like. Looks kind of like this. You got your users on the one end, and then you know the bastion host that's kind of tightly controlled. <clears throat> VLAN, uh, virtual LAN. So a VLAN is any broadcast domain that's partitioned up and isolated into computer networks. Um, in the context of virtual, this kind of refers to the physical objects themselves. Uh, the best way I know how to describe this um, is think of like an office building that's multi-layered, like multiple stories. Accounting's on the second floor, marketing's on the third floor. You can separate those on a single network switch into like the second floor or the third floor. So you're gonna have one switch that's doing multiple networks, multiple physical networks on a single device. Um, oh yeah, it's also uh, sometimes referred to as a perimeter network, VLANs. It's not usually seen anymore though. Um, and this is kind of kind of the key for tonight, right? Network segmentation. Um, in computing, in computing, in computers, in networking, this is the act or the practice of splitting up the computer network into these subnets. Uh, each subnet being divided into a segment. Um, the advantage of this is splitting primarily for boosting performance and improving security. And I kind of want everyone to keep improving security along the bottom line here uh, in mind. Because when it's set up right, that is the case. But realistically, like in our industry now, we need something new um, besides calling it network segmentation. The vast majority of networks that we see uh, from the red, red team side will be segmented, you'll have multiple VLANs, everything will be laid out nice on paper, then, excuse me, you hit the network, and I run a scan, and I see everything. Every single VLAN pops up for me. So you're not segmenting your network, you're really just creating broadcast domains. Um, the term I've been using is network segregation. Segregation's obviously racially charged, and there's a lot of racists out there, so we're gonna kind of switch the nomenclature to network partitioning. Um, and that kind of goes back to the definition of VLANs, right? Partitioning's all, all in, the, in the name itself. So network partitioning, we're gonna, we're gonna use this as the act of actually applying the logical and security-minded routing behind the network segmentation. So you can, you can say that your network's segmented, but for the scope of this talk, when we talk about the actual in-depth security of it, we're gonna talk about the partitioning as well. Um, you're gonna erect routing partitions, right? Like segmentation is supposed to be. Um, how it breaks down, network segmentation, great for logical splits, great for network control. It's essentially broadcast domains now. That's what people really use it for. Or labeling, you know. Um, and yeah, it's without routing, routing like 95% of the time. What, what's the saying, 87% of statistics are made up on the fly? <laughs> that definitely goes into this talk. Uh, for network partitioning, same thing. It's great for logical splits, it's great for network control. It's great for design and logical layouts and documentation, and it's most greatest for security, because that's where you're actually gonna get network separation. So networking 101, this is, we're gonna kind of look at the basics of networking tonight. And this is, this is a basic network. This is what most small to medium businesses look like in a very watered down fashion. Um, so we have our, our, our computers, we have accounting, marketing, CSRs, storage server, this is server line here. RDS remote apps, so people from the outside can get in to do some work on the outside, and vice versa. You know, you serve these apps to people locally, they do their work. There's a website, a switchy thingy, and a firewall. And then the internet's on the outside. Um, again, this is like, so again, watered down. We'll assume that the firewall is on the HTTP and virtual wall, all that stuff. That's the switchy thingy. Switch. It's the same thing. You just pull the plug on that and <laughs> things aren't working. Uh, also, all of the uh, all of the network diagrams, if we can call them as such, were made in MS Paint tonight. Just so <laughs> everyone's on the level. 
This is high quality. Wait, those are way better than I thought they would yeah, be. I know, right? You're like, just fucking drawing it with your mouth. So. Yeah. Just you wait, sir. Just you wait. Yeah, those lines are way too straight. Because they get better. Um, so we're going to look at this in kind of two shots, right? This is what most, most network engineers, quote unquote, networking people do. 90% uh, of them in this one, so we're, we're down 5%. <laughs> but this is uh, implementing VLANs, right? VLAN 100, which actually is the right name. VLAN 110 for accounting, marketing 120, and the CSRs around 130. So when we go into places, typically we see people with segmented networks, right? And this is what they have. All of these servers are part of these VLANs, all of these comp controllers are part of the VLANs, but they all route back to this widget thing, and they all route flat. Like, the difference between this guy and this guy is if a broadcast form breaks out here, it's only gonna stay here. I can still get the same access there that I can here. It's still flat. It's all the same. So when we bring in network partition into it, what we do is we actually set up the network routing, right? So we set up the VLANs like we had them before, and then we route the VLANs specifically. This is how VLANs were intended to be, and in a lot of enterprise networks, this is how you see it. This will get you so far from you know, defensibility and a, an attacker's perspective, how hard it is to migrate through networks like this. It's not that hard, but it's a lot more difficult than just landing on a you know, flat network. Um, so what we have is, hopefully you guys can see this. Um, so VLAN 110, right? We got the, the kind of fancy spangled lines now. So VLAN 110 can get out to the internet and the brown lines, they can hit the RDS and the storage server. Uh, marketing can get out to storage server and website. And what this does is this gives us more s separation in the network, right? Back to that, that, that network partitioning. Now, if I land on a marketing computer, I can get to the marketing computers and the internet and the website. But I can't hit accounting, I can't hit CSRs. I'm now, I'm now partitioning this network out correctly so that all of these computers are only able to talk to the things that they need to be talking to. That network is a lot more dynamic. Um, so we're gonna kind of roll it back to just general network uh, design again. We pulled all the VLANs out and everything. And what we're doing now is we're taking our website and we're throwing that out at the firewall on a DMZ. So now this is gonna improve performance for the rest of the network because all that internet traffic isn't, isn't traversing through the firewall to the switch and up. We're on a separate DMZ that's all staying out that way. Uh, again, the VLANs aren't here now, so we'll get to that part later. But by moving that, that website out into a DMZ, we're creating a more defensible workspace on the internal side. We're moving all of that external traffic outside. Um, actually kind of a bad drawing here. Uh, we're using the RDS server in this one to create a bastion hook because we know that that RDS server is going to be talked to from outside uh, sources, uh, employees on the outside. It's not actually a pass through. There should be another line here. I don't know if I can draw another line, but just imagine. Oh, it's in the it's in the next slide. So, so you know, it's not actually a pass through. It just happens to look through as well. It's kind of like a separate DMZ. So we've added another firewall in between our bastion host and the initial firewall because we know that the bastion host doing that RDS service stuff, it's only going to pass a certain number of ports to a certain number of computers. It doesn't need full access to this side of the network. And it definitely doesn't need full access out. So what, what we've now created is, a, is an actual factual internal network. This is stuff that we know needs to stay in-house and shouldn't necessarily have an outbound connection or an inbound connection. That's going to kind of depend on you know, things like business culture and we get into a lot of politics in, in that end of things because you know, people have to surf their Facebook while they're at work. But this gives us the defensibility of having a DMZ that people on the internet are supposed to look at, we know that they're gonna be hitting it. A bastion host, you know, you set it up correctly for a VPN on the firewall here, so that you have the VPN to get into your RDS, now you're encrypted. You're only allowing the VPN port, whatever port that's gonna be for you. And you're separating that bastion host. Ideally, in this instance, you're gonna set up monitoring specifically for the bastion host to monitor when that thing's getting hit, because that's gonna be an early indicator that people are gonna start migrating inwards past that next firewall inside. But that gives us kind of that internal network separation again. And then this would be kind of throwing the VLANs back in there, getting the VLAN routing, and getting everything really tightened up. There it is. 
so you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, but again, so we have the, the VLAN 100, VLAN 110, 120, 130 for marketing, CSRs, blah, 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 and the website and the DMZ. So this is layering both of those together for, for that real defensive depth net networking that the CISSP will train you on. Um, this is, these are kind of BS routings. This is just to kind of show you. But so the VLAN ID, VLAN 100, which is the storage network. It can receive inbound connections. There we go. It can give outbound connections, there we go, uh, to everything. All of these servers or all of these computers can talk to it. Uh, not internet, because your storage server doesn't need to be talking to the internet. If it does, you can proxy it and blah, 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 blah. Um, it can accept inbound connections from 110, 120, 130, 140 from the bastion host if they need it, things like that. Uh, so VLAN 110 are accounting computers. It can take uh, outbound to the internet, and it can take outbound to storage. But it doesn't need to go outbound anywhere else. It doesn't, market, accounting computers don't need to talk to marketing. Accounting computers don't need access to the CSRs, right? There's no, there's no point in having that. So cut it off and defend it, defend it. Uh, it can take inbound from, again, the storage server and the internet, because, I don't know, Banking websites, why not? Um, 120 marketing, again, it can get out to the website, the internet, because I'm sure they're tweeting and stuff, doing marketing stuff. Um, I don't think they need access to a bunch of hosts, do they? Yeah, they said they did, so we gave it to them. <laughs> and same with the inbound. But what we're doing is we're creating these network paths, right? So accounting only needs this and the internet. So that's all it's getting. It doesn't need access to anything else in this network. And that's, that's what we're doing with the partitioning, right? With, with actual network segmentation, that's the end goal, is to get the routing in place to, to create the defensible network. Um, is there a, a lot more setup? I wouldn't say a lot more. There's a lot more design on the back end. Um, but once you have your documentation in place, and except for the VLAN's cake, right? You're just putting ports into other ports, and it's, it's easy. The, the real groundwork is getting this all set up. And once it's set up, it's really going to put you in a much better position. And again, defense in depth. Like this, this is basics on up. You get a perimeter and a DMZ, firewall and DMZ. I am strongly of the mindset that internal firewalls are a thing and you should be using them for stuff, especially if you have ICS or IoT things or cameras. Get that stuff separated off of the network. Um, so yeah, perimeter DMZ, right? Get the edge covered, uh, get alerting on the edge, and then kind of move up the stack, move down the stack. Uh, bad design. Move down the stack, right? Set up network partitioning, and make sure that you're separating your network so that they only need to talk to what they need to talk to. Uh, bastion hosts, and then monitoring from there. If you know that you have stuff that's gonna be web facing, but not web front, so things like RDS, or I don't know, whatever. That's a good one for the bastion host. Uh, proxy servers, things like that. Um, things that you know are going to be touching the internet, but not like internet specific facing things like web. Set them up as bastion hosts. Get specific monitoring on them, because you know that those are going to be the soft cookies that Brit is going to be going on. And then sim on the inside and all the things. <laughs> Get sim everywhere. Network visibility is huge. Matt can teach you how to do that with the Splunk stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the next time, right? Yeah. Um, right, after yeah. Car hacking. <laughs> right after car hacking. Yeah. <laughs> so what more can you do to be defensible? A whole lot, right? This you can, we can go on for days. Uh, client isolation, wireless and local. Uh, kind of back to the VLAN pictures. I don't know how far back that is. That, not too far. So what client isolation will do is you can set up client isolation on VLAN 130, for instance. And what that will do is give 130 only the ability for the single machine to talk to what it needs to. It doesn't need to talk to you, the customer service reps. There's no need. Marketing people don't need to share stuff between each other, um, like Zomba and things. They can go to the file server for that. There's better controls on it. There's better monitoring. ACLs, access control lists, switches, firewalls have them. Uh, do MAC filtering. You know, you need to plug in and get DHCP, MAC filter. Your network probably isn't going to be big enough to, well, some of you might be, the, you guys back there, to have, you know, People needing to plug in and get straight to the internet connection. Turn off Zamba. <laughs> if you're not using it, dude, get rid of 4.5. If you are using it, upgrade it to 3. Get, get rid of Zamba if you can. 
But really, there's a million other things you can do. We could sit here and go on all night long. But there's pizza and beer in the back. And we have Slack, and I'm always around on Slack. So hit me up there if you have any more questions. I'll take questions here, too, if you have any. More of a comment than a question. I know there's a bunch of networking guys back there. How'd I do? Is that okay? I feel really good. How about token ring network? Yeah, so <laughs> token ring. <laughs> token <laughs> ring. So, <laughs> remember, yeah, remember Hub? <laughs> <laughs> so token rings are fun. How do you defend against vampire yeah. nets? Yeah, that's not uh, vampire <laughs> nets is garlic spikes. <laughs> you install those on the firewall. Vampires have some thick net. Yeah. How do you defend against it? Yeah, garlic spikes. You put that on the firewall. <laughs> it's with the squid package. You just install it. Have a net. Or yum it. Whatever you're playing on. Rub your, rub your thick net. Give it one garlic. There you go. <laughs> Every inch of it you have to roll down. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah. All right.